Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an update on my cobra lilies and we are going to talk about how to keep them cool for the summertime. So I have several different plants of several different ages and they're all um, doing really, really well. The first picture of the year is always seems to be the biggest and these pictures haven't actually fully developed yet. But here is a cobra lily picture and here is last year's biggest picture. So you can see the huge size difference between last year's biggest which i was so happy about and this year's biggest here that um is still getting bigger so that's awesome it's um going to be a great year for these guys i took one out of this uh, container here just to show you up close but you can see where it sits it's right beside the pond and i can always i use the pond water in here a lot of the time i have a tds meter i know the pond water is usually under about 10 tds or total dissolved solids parts per million so 10 parts per million is really, really soft water. So I know it's safe to use. And yeah, so I'm always constantly scooping it out and putting it in there, especially on a hot day. I like to just overflow the little container so that it stays cool. Oops, bump the tripod. Come summertime, and I'm gonna make a few adjustments here so you can see it a little better. I'm filming through a fence so you can see this. Now, right behind the cobra lily, and in between that fence post right there is my waterfall covered in ferns that is where they go when we have any kind of real heat waves this year the ferns came in super super dense usually it's not quite like that um, those maiden's hair ferns they came in massive this year check out all the maiden's hair ferns along the edges they're just huge just huge so anyways that is where they sit right in the stream at the edge of the waterfall it's about one centimeter deep there, but even in the um, warmest weather, the stream stays nice and cool, so I don't have to worry about these guys overheating. Biggest problem with them is when the roots get too warm, they cook very fast. So I'm gonna move you back down, and as you can see, I have all, kind of, all kinds of recyclables here that I'm using, but why don't we swing you over to this guy here that's right beside us. Not that, that is an orchid. Right here under the table, there is a cobra lily for us. So again, this is a new picture on it. And it's not quite developed yet, but there's a good silhouette of it up close. It's gonna get much more bulbousy as it grows, but it's gotta be reaching um, close to full height soon. Look at how much the other pictures are lower than it. It's such a big jump in picture size this year. But anyways, this is what a copra lily looks like. I have them in white containers. These are bleach containers, actually. Uh, it was um, one of the cheapest, easiest things I could find as a container for them. All I did was punch some holes in the bottom of it, and we were good to go. I made sure they were quite shallow. I don't know if you can see that. Just how shallow they really are. Only about the first four inches. The only thing I did find with them, they're kind of flimsy when they're full. Um, I don't like that, but I um, I find it absolutely necessary to keep them in white containers just to reflect all that heat back out. We have a little one here that's coming up, so that's nice. It was just this big when I uh, repotted this. This was a guy, we repotted this one together last winter when it was dormant. And look at it now, so it's doing really good. But anyways, uh, what else can I tell you about them? They They do like bright sun. I keep them in sun most of the year, except for um, during a heat wave. And at that point, you know, if the daytime temperature starts to get above 85, I start to worry about them and they get tucked in the shade until it gets cooler or in the waterfall. The mix I use is just a peat moss perlite mix. They like it nice and airy and fluffy. You don't want anything too stagnant. And for winter care, they, um, they did great outside. It was a really cold winter as everybody had and you know these guys did great they had no um problems with it whatsoever i think if it was to get that cold again i would bring them in a little bit sooner but i left them out and it was minus eight and they're just fine um let's see what else they catch their own bugs because they're outside i don't worry about fertilizing them i know last year there this one or the other one had a bloom spike on it and I tried to self-pollinate it, but the seeds did not take. I'm not sure. I guess you can't self-pollinate these guys. 
which kind of sucks because these are all the same clone, just divisions from the same plant. So it might mean, and I could be wrong, maybe I just um, wasn't su successful in pollination, but if they can't self-pollinate, technically these are all the same plant, and they may not be able to get seeds from them, which is a little upsetting. But So that guy's going to go back in his home over here shortly, as soon as we're done filming. So I'll swing you back along here. And yeah, maybe I'll give you another update in a month or so when these things are just looking absolutely fabulous because um, it is going to be a good year for cobra lilies. So anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope you gained a few tips from it. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.